education. Uh, I'd like to introduce our presenter, Jeff Hobbs. He is our Director of Engineering, uh, overseeing all our development of our Active State products, from language distributions to development tools and web-based solutions. Though he's responsible for leading and fostering our talented development team, Jeff is a coder at heart and dynamic languages are his passion. He's been a member of the Tickle Core team for more than a decade and is the primary author of many popular Tickle modules as well as a contributing author for Perl and Python extensions. Jeff is a Tickle TK Core maintainer and co-author of Practical Programming in Tickle and TK and regularly publishes papers on the topic. Jeff works closely with Active State customers including Cisco, Boeing, Synopsys, NASA and Intel to deliver the best dynamic languages solutions for their development projects. Now. Without further ado, here's Jeff. Morning, everyone. Um, first, I'm going to go uh, into a little discussion about Active State, uh, where we sit in, in the development world. Then a uh, right quick launch into the 8.6 roadmap and discuss then 8.6 features in depth. There is an expectation that uh, most of the attendees will, have, will know what is in 8.5 already because I'll only be discussing 8.6. If, uh, for those of you, since at least half uh, mentioned that you were on 8.4 or earlier, if you want a review of 8.5, please see our previous webinar at this URL. And then we'll follow up at the end with some Q&A. It's so a little bit about Active State. Uh, we are the dynamic language experts. We do have over 10 years focusing on the open source dynamic languages and that experience covers uh, multiple dynamic languages, uh, starting with Perl, then adding uh, Python, Tickle, Ruby, PHP, and, and JavaScript experience. And we do this on many platforms, anything from the Big Iron, AIX, HPUX, to the commodity Linux, Solaris, uh, Linux, Windows, and Mac OS X. And of course, we do assist in the development, management, and distribution of dynamic languages, and 97% of the Fortune 1000 are using Active State products. So a little bit about the languages universe that Active State focuses on. Um, our stacks in, in Perl, Python, and Tickle cover all of the named platforms, you know, six operating systems, 16 different architectures when you consider sometimes different chipsets, otherwise 32 uh, and 64-bit, 17,000 additional packages and modules that we make available through things like the Teapot for Tickle and PPM for Perl. Uh, and all of this across 10 major language releases that we that are currently active. And of course, we've been doing this for over a decade. So uh, first off, a little bit about the 8.6 roadmap. It is currently in active development. Uh, the first alpha release of 8.6 uh, was done on April 2008. That will mean it's coming up on three years now. And that was done at the same month of the 8.4.19 release, which was considered um, almost the, the final end of the 8.4 release set. Uh, in the meantime, 8.5 has become the stable series. 8.6 has gone on to have a beta 1 release, which was done in December of 2008, and 8.6 beta 2 is still coming soon. Uh, in reflection, the 8.5 release series actually had a near four-year release time frame, and we're coming up on the three-year mark for 8.6. We are marching towards final and do hope to have an 8.6 final done in 2011. As always, community input is important. Uh, you all here listening are members of that community, so your questions and, and advice are always appreciated. With that in mind, um, let's switch to the next poll question. Just to understand before we get into this, why people are interested in um, what are your key drivers to upgrade? Are they critical bug fixes? Is improved performance important to you? Is it new key features? Or is it staying up to date? Please choose your primary reason for up upgrading. All right, and now we'll share that uh, with many answered. So obviously for half of you, it's new key features. For 11%, it's performance. And for a quarter, it is just staying up to date. Um, of course, I'm sure that 
many of these are many of you are actually interested in in all of these as well but we were looking for the the key driver so with that said let's go into eight six changes there are, are numerous tips that have been implemented for eight six uh, tip is a tickle improvement process and is a specific uh, change request document that states rationale and implementation for a key feature change in the core. Now this wouldn't relate to all of the bugs that have gone in, but these are actual uh, script or, or C API level feature changes. There have been 49 tips made final. Final mean it, you, a tip is moved to final only when it is actually implemented in the core. There's one more in the accepted state. That means that it has been accepted by the Tickle core team, yet not yet implemented. Eight more of these remain in the draft state whether they'll actually be done in 8.6 uh, timeline before final it requires uh, further discussion and voting on those features. To put that in, in perspective, there are 70 other tips that are targeting 8.7, which is to say anything that would be, on, be beyond the next release uh, but actually be compatible with the 8.x series. Seven tips specifically target 9.0 because they recommend features that would actually break compati compatibility with 8.x. 8.6 itself is 99.9% .9 compatible with 8.5. There are, of course, a few changes. There are changes in error messages. Um, we have seen the occasional case where people were, were doing, especially in test automation, seeking specific error conditions happening, and a few of the error cases have changed. Um, Bytecodes have also changed this is generally uh, an internal issue, and you have to watch version compatibility. But for those of you who do use a bytecode compiler, such as the one in Tickle DevKit, um, you can the TBC load will load an 8.5 bytecode into 8.6, but not vice versa. And there are separate bytecode compilers for 8.5 and 8.6 now in the Tickle DevKit. So what's the first uh, major feature in 8.6? Oh, well, it's OO. Um, Tickle finally has an approved single object oriented system and for here uh, also where you see the small numbers, the T numbers uh, to the side, those represent the tip numbers. So if you go to tip.tcl.tk and then slash 257 for example, you will see the first tip relating to core OO. Tips 320 and 354 followed on afterwards to uh, provide extra features as, as OO developed. This was a major effort by Donald Fellows. It is a foundational object-oriented system that is inspired by both Exotical and SNIT and um, provides features of both. It is actually very feature-rich while still meant to be foundational. It is provided in the core so there is no package required. It just is there already when you uh, start 8.6. It is also available as a extended package on, in Tickle 8.5. There are the standard commands. It's the OO namespace, so there's OO class, OO define, OO copy. On the right hand, you see a very simple example of how it's used. We create an example class. It has a variable. You see this constructor, destructor. You use methods uh, for creating class uh, methods. and then there's the instantiation, it'll return example, which is the name of the class. You create that by saying example create B, so you're creating object B, given the initial value 4, and that returns you the object B, and of course then you can run the bar method on object B. Um, so it is a class-based object system with dynamic redefinition, and there is per object customization possible with both filters and mixins, there is good documentation all related to this uh, ready in the 8.6 docs. There is also a full C API for the creation management of classes and instances at the, the C level as well. So on to the next feature. In 8.6 there are several improvements to string and list handling. Uh, the first one to mention is that there is simplified tickle prefix matching and this is under the uh, command tickle uh, colon colon prefix with a C API and this is primarily meant for option parsing so when you have a, a set of options that you're wanting to parse and find the 
greatest common subset of, of a string amongst many, then this is the command that provides that for you. This used to be available only as a TKC API, and it was moved both to the tickle as a C API and then exposed at the tickle level with tickle prefix. Next is that the string trim functions have been uh, expanded to become Unicode aware so that the it's not the by default they don't trim ASCII white space they actually trim all Unicode white space. After that um, going on to list handling we see that there's a new bisect option in LSearch. What this provides is um, actually allowing you to find if you have a sorted list where inside the sorted list would the item that you have requested to search for be inserted. What this is doing is allowing you to actually create uh, insertion into uh, a sorted list. So for your algorithms that might have needed that, we're exposing this very easily at the tickle level. Uh, moving on to the lsort-stride, you can do group sort. So this can be very handy when you're doing sorting over the output of array get or a dict. Um, if you do lsort-stride2, it'll move, and then you can, uh, it'll sort every other item in the, the list and keep together the key and value results from array get. Next is the, uh, the point that lset now allows you to extend lists. So this is just convenient so you don't have to have an if-else condition. If you're trying to add one to the list, you can just continue to use the lset command only. So lset my list of end plus one foo is now equivalent to lapending to my list foo. On the next set of features we find in 8.6 are the interp and namespace enhancements. First one of those is that you now have the ability to cancel script evaluation. Uh, this is noted in tip uh, number 285 with the rationale. And it is exposed at the tickle level with the interp cancel command. And there is the CAPI helper uh, of tickle cancel eval. Now, what this will do is uh, mark at the tickle level and way down in the bytecode and such that if any evaluation is occurring, it should break and unwind back to the top. Um, users should use this cautiously because there can be cases where, you know, breaking in the middle will leave uh, certain things in an unset or undefined state. And the next is that you can also check if the interp is indeed active, um, which is somewhat of corollary function with the tickle interp active uh, C API. The Namespace has been uh, namespace ensembles introduced in 8. Uh, enhanced in 8.5 have now allow you to create new parameters option and this can be very handy if you're using your ensemble if you're using namespace ensembles to create subcommands and you want to have some default parameters that go along with them uh, in addition they a change in the overall interp handling in 8.6 is that encoding system at startup is now ISO 8859-1, which is basic uh, Latin 1 encoding. It is no longer the identity encoding. And a couple more changes in interps are that you have a new info error stack and a dash error stack um, return dict option. And this allows you, instead of seeing what the last error was, in a string format actually returns you the stack of errors in a tickle list format or it, sorry it returns you the stack of evaluation when an error has occurred in tickle list format making for much easier parsing of the valuation stack in, in error conditions and um, finally one very uh, important for debugging command that has been added is the unsupported representation command. What this does is expose the tickle obj internal representation to the user at the tickle level, basically telling you um, if you actually have a pure list, maybe you have a list that has a string representation, and this can be very informative if you're trying to do very careful optimization and trying to figure out if your commands are shimmering when you're not expecting it. <laughs>